Hello everybody, welcome to Chin Fat. In this episode I am talking about an update, very significant update that uh, Premiere Pro did about a week ago. And this was the uh, Premiere's ability on a PC specifically to be able to export to uh, ProRes. You've been able to do this so far on a Mac Macintosh, but they finally uh, have been able to implement the Apple ProRes uh, codec inside of Premiere Pro for PC users, which is really, really nice because it is a codec that a lot of people will use uh, when shooting on uh, on cameras on something like an Atomos uh, external recorder. Uh, Blackmagic uh, will re record in that uh, codec, and also the RED camera uh, has recently um, updated their, their camera so that you have the option of shooting in ProRes. It's a very solid, robust, very high-quality codec. The nice thing about it is that it is very, very smooth to edit. It plays back really smoothly. It's not called an intra frame where it's a uh, compression where it, actually every single frame, individual frame, is, uh, has its own compression data as opposed to something where, uh, intra frame encoding where it uses a keyframe. Where there's one keyframe that, uh, that holds, that retains all the color information, then all the subsequent frames borrow that information from one frame. In that type of compression, you get a very small file, but it's very kind of bulky and, and, uh, and choppy when you try to edit it. So uh, ProRes, like I said, is a very smooth uh, codec to edit with and very nice quality. One important thing about ProRes is that it is 10-bit, which basically means that it provides uh, over 1,000 shades of gray for each individual pixel. It also has a higher bit rate, which means that it's higher quality than most stuff that you can shoot, especially if you're shooting on like an SD card and a DSLR camera. In fact, this update comes with the latest uh, Premiere. Let's go to about Premiere. You have to have 13.0.2. And this is the update where they've added ProRes uh, to PC. On Macintosh, you were able to export to ProRes in the first place, but you had to choose a specific type of QuickTime video, go down and change the codec. Now, under the Mac, they have these installed as presets, which is nice and convenient, much better than it was before. Two good things about ProRes here. I'm going to hit Control-M here, like we're going to export out a project here, and we've got our formats up here. H.264 is one of those intra frames that I've been talking about uh, compression. That's a lower file size, but it, it can get kind of choppy when you're trying to edit it. Uh, but let's pull this down. We're going to go to QuickTime. QuickTime is that is uh, what ProRes is. It's a type of QuickTime video. So we're going to go to QuickTime. And now in a QuickTime, these presets you open up, you'll notice it has added uh, six different presets ready to export out to ProRes. Now, two different reasons you might want to export to ProRes. One uh, is it is a good um, it's a co good codec for using proxy footage. If you if you got a bunch of really high quality red footage or Alexa footage or just something that's just huge and bulky, uh, you can compress your footage to proxy. And they've got a preset here already, right here. Apple ProRes Proxy is a lower bandwidth, but still looks really good. Uh, so, so when your editor can edit in this footage and then right later on relink them to the high quality footage, and that's what the ProRes Proxy is, and that's a, you, that uses a lower data. Rate uh, than all the other clips, but it is still 10-bit. The second reason you might want to use Apple ProRes Proxy is to export to uh, is to master your project. When you're done, you want to export out a high-quality project, and you want to have a master from which you'll use which you'll use to compress to lower uh, quality clips for things like YouTube or Vimeo or um, or showing at a festival or something like that, or, to, or showing to, uh, playing on broadcast. You can use one of these uh, ProRes qualities. Usually 444 is one that you use for mastering or for doing effects. And then uh, ProRes 422 is pretty much a standard that most uh, broadcast places, broadcast uh, locations and festivals will require uh, to display your project in. It's a really nice high quality movie format that does not terribly bulky. Uh, in fact, if you want to look at the, if you want to look at the data rate of these uh, different codecs here, uh, you can go and you can Google Apple ProRes, either bandwidth or data rate, and it will bring up as one of the top links uh, this what they call white paper. Their white paper is a PDF that basically that shows all their data rates for each uh, codec that can be used. If you scroll down through this, it gives kind of an in-depth explanation as to what uh, the ProRes codec is and how it works. Uh, but then you'll come up to this sheet right here. But then you'll come into this portion of the PDF right here. I've got this on page 24. It depends on which uh, which date you're downloading this. But as you move down, it'll show different resolutions, and it will show uh, different it'll show different resolutions, and it will show the different codecs. And it goes from low to high quality here. You got ProRes Proxy, then ProRes LT, ProRes 422, ProRes HQ 422, ProRes 444, and ProRes 444 XQ. Uh, now these ha just basically have different. Uh, data rates are higher quality and retain more color information per per frame 
uh, as you move on up the line here. But you have different dimensions, different resolutions here. As you scroll down and look at your resolutions, let's get into uh, maybe 1920 by 1080 and see that 24 frames per second uh, ProRes Proxy uh, has a megabit per second of 36 megabits per second, uh, which is pretty low quality. That's that's pro that's probably about the same quality as a lot of like uh, DSLR cameras that are shooting to the SD card. Uh, then as you move on up to ProRes LT, you got 82 megabits per second and so on. Uh, as you get into 4K, you'll see these numbers essentially, you'll see these numbers more than essentially double here as you uh, move on up the bandwidth scale here. If you're mastering a project, you probably want to find out what data rate uh, you shot in. If you shot in a DSLR, uh, you might be fine mastering the proxy if it's as long as this is as long as your data rate is higher than your original footage. Uh, a good a sure bet is always to go to ProRes 422 when you're using uh, DSLR or, low, or lower quality H.264 or ABC footage. Uh, if you're if you're using something like a Red camera or an Alexa camera or you're using an Atomos and shooting and shooting at a specific uh, uh, like the R3D codec, uh, you probably if you're using uh, especially 4K RED, you're probably going to want to master to ProRes 444. And these ones here are the highest quality ones you can export out to. The ProRes 4444XQ is usually used for, for doing effects from high quality footage, like the RED footage. Uh, when you're sending it to something like After Effects and then sending it back to the editor, you are you can send back a proxy file for the editor to edit with, and then a high quality version at the highest quality bandwidth possible, and that way it retains all the original color information from the RED footage. But that, that's, that's what this is really good for. For. These these two here, this is good for high quality masters and also for using effects and mastering uh, your clips back to a ma mastering your your effects to clips. So within Premiere, if we're going to be exporting this out to, if we're going to be mastering a clip, if we're going to be mastering a, a project here uh, to ProRes, let's say we want to use Apple ProRes 422. I'm going to scroll down to the video area here, and you have some different options here. Uh, nice thing about uh, ProRes versus uh, DNX. DNX is one that people have been commonly using, uh, created by Avid for exporting out to master and doing effect work. But ProRes is a little bit more flexible when you're able to export. You are a little bit more flexible on setting custom uh, resolutions. DNX locks you to some very specific presets, but you can sell, you can choose custom resolutions just by unchecking this and typing in your own resolution. Often not necessary, but so that it is an, uh, a nice convenience once in a while. So once I've got my area set down here, I can choose my name, go to a location, and hit export, and export out my file. As I mentioned, you can do this for proxy workflow as well. The ProRes proxy uh, codec is a really, really nice, uh, smooth codec to use for, especially if you're doing something like multicam editing, uh, where you're using multiple streams that proxy, uh, doing something at a 720 resolution or 1080 resolution. Uh, most machines can keep up with uh, multiple streams with up to like uh, five to 10 streams of video doing multicam editing. Once I'm done here, I'm gonna go on. Here's my final edit uh, uh, file that I just exported out. I can drag and drop this into Premiere here, or you can also view those in VLC. VLC is a good viewer to use to watch ProRes files on your PC. Once these get really big and the master files get really bulky, uh, they will chug when you try to play them back because they retain quite a bit of information, but you're not gonna use them as a viewing clip. You're gonna use them as a master file uh, with, with which to compress it to smaller files for other uh, viewing options. And here we go, there's our clip. Nice high quality video clip from uh, exporting to ProRes. So if you have any questions, please post them and thanks for watching.